landscape but on the landscape this time so looking at uh, this uh, mesh here in in 3d studio max so basically it was just pretty straightforward um, sloping terrain that I um, just created with a turbo smooth just a basic polygon thing and then we had these um, little mounds early uh, at the back of the house and then there was a path there so and that mainly the house was sort of intersecting with the landscape like this these sort of plateaus that was going down so it was fairly nice um very nice design and so how did i bring that over into unreal engine i brought it over by all right okay sorry do okay so landscape this is the landscape that I imported. So, and what I did was to cop to overlay to create a landscape through this landscape tool, which you just sort of here down here is very simple, easy. You just click on this, and then it tells you how big you want it, and uh, and then I used the sculpt tool to uh, make it fit basically so if I speed up a bit there to make it fit um, and so it's not perfect but it doesn't really matter because you know it's just ground so um, <clears throat> and then the sculpt tool you can even use a pen which I can't find my pen I've got my tablet but um, and I think it'd be really fun so you know you just sort of sculpt like this and Oh, you know, so that was too big. I don't want to do that. Where's it gone? Oh, I think my mouse is too fast. So let me slow down. Yeah, that's better. I thought I was being clever using this mouse speed thing. But anyway, so there's my massive mound. I would just say control Z. Um, yeah, so the strength of the tool, when I use it on Sculpt, I put it on zero one, one and then it's really subtle. So you see, and um, make it fit like this, and when you press the Shift key, it goes down when you're sculpting, and then I use this Smooth tool a lot, and all these erosion tools and noise and stuff, that's really, really cool. Um, I think it's more when you're creating landscape out of your imagination. Here, I was kind of trying to more stick to the site. Um, there's another way you can do it, which is to use a height map, which I have done um, and afterwards. So I should probably make a video especially saying how to use height maps. So I'll do that on this same example. Um, but as a separate video, I think because there's a lot to cover here in this one. So I've just sculpted it and it's, it's a lovely tool. It takes a bit of time, um, but I just made it fit this way. Sort of use really big brushes so you can use the brackets, um, the brackets on your keyboard to kind of make the um, tool go small. And you, you, can, you can make quite sort of small adjustments. It's quite nice. And then the big tool, you know, when you want to make sort of early on sort of big changes to your landscape get the general slope going and then these mounds at the end here uh, where I was trying to hide the horizon I didn't really do a very good job of that but um, to be honest I think I need to make the landscape a bit bigger and to kind of add more trees or something anyway um, I was just trying to concentrate there so <clears throat> once this landscape uh, was fitting pretty much the house I uh, delete that and then add so I need to unselect 
this you when when you're in editing of the landscape mode you can't really change things in the outliner so you need to click on that place so I've I uh, hide this my 3 Studio Max landscape and I'm sort of left with my Unreal Engine landscape so then onto that once I've got the landscape when you click on paint then there is these two materials that <clears throat> uh, again what I've done here is follow this grass tool quick start tutorial which you find um, on the Unreal Engine so I'm not gonna cover it in this video how I did this bit because um, there's you can just follow this tutorial however if you want me to create this tutorial um, basically to explain how this works as a video please let me know it feels um, I'm, you know I'm, I don't know it's quite it's a bit complicated it's quite simple but there's a bit where you need to do blueprints and stuff like that so um, let me know if you want me to make this as a video tutorial please um, and so what happens when you do this okay I'll just take you quickly you create this um, landscape and then you give it this material here and the material here I've only got two so I've got this sort of texture of rock and texture of grass and that's what they give in there um, tutorial but also here you sample the grass as a mesh and it's a mesh you know obviously that's animated with the grass with the wind and so on so you then <coughs> you do these sort of landscape grass layer and um, and then you put it in here and once you've got it in here that means that you can sort of simply paint so if I change my tool strength to one and change the fall off so that it's hard may be reduced here we'll make um reduce the size a bit and then i'm going to paint rock on the landscape now and there you go so you can see it's a bit sort of minecraft like with the with the squares um so basically that's kind of relative to the original landscape you created with the resolution and so on. Um, but so here I can just sort of put my grass back and I mean, how cool is that really? Seriously, you can, you know, that path there, I mean, with a bit of practice and getting used to it and tweaking the materials, you can, you know, you can just draw your path like that and, and then draw your grass on and that's really cool okay so this grass is basically um, a material all this grass I just paint that I don't painted that on with this um, grass tool how cool is that so I'm sure you can sort of go in it and edit it and do all sorts of things to it but um, it's very very powerful so that's that for the grass tool and then um, if we move on to the um, um, foliage foliage tool so basically here this is where we need um, some foliage so here, these things I've actually bought from the speed tree website and you can actually just buy these for like $20 and you just stick it straight into your uh, import them into the uh, this way you know normal way to import and then you've and then you can just put them as so let me see where they are plants so I've got this uh, grass or was it there's a put them here for some reason backyard grass you know and uh, so you just drag and drop when you drag whoop, you just drag it and drop them there and then you select it you tick it like this tick tick so for example I want to tick a couple I want to draw with a few of these bushes so there's the bush and I'm gonna paint with it 
and um, pre again press shift I delete and so what you want to do is play with the density here and then you can have and then you can so obviously you can change your oh, your brush size I wanted to delete that but anyway I'll keep that for now I'll keep them because I can't delete them. They're nice, aren't they? Anyway, doesn't matter. But um, so so that's for the foliage, and so basically you can just you can do this. This is how I did the trees. Oop, no. So I untick this one, untick this, take that. So see, density is a bit strong here. Density. Point one, and I just add some trees there. How powerful is that? And they're automatically rotated, and sort of you can do all your placement there. So it's really, really worth uh, spending some time with this because, my gosh, look how much fun. Um, and so these trees. Um, Yes, you can get that from speed tree or you can make your own. The, the good thing about the speed tree ones is that they're automatically um, animated. They go with the wind. So, um, yes, that's another thing. I added the uh, wind. So that's really easy. Um, gosh, it couldn't be wind directional source. And you just drag and drop that in the scene. And, and then, so you've got your wind here that uh, I put at zero point one everywhere, really low. Uh, there's this thing about gusts, so it gets really strong and then it's hardly noticeable. So I just put it like that. No variation, at least to sort of get an idea. And I put these two trees as well, added these trees from the... Um, uh, kite um, open well demo file as well. So these two tall pine trees, they're very good. Like they're swaying in the wind. So that's kind of an overview of what I did. And then um, again, of course, the post process volume, I think I sort of went into the other video about it. I did this LUT, which made a big difference as well. Um, so I hope this uh, this has helped you to put it put you in the right direction more or less. Um, I uh, know some people would rather maybe that I did more detailed tutorials, so uh, more specific about how to create a landscape from scratch. You know things like this. Here I'm more sort of trying to describe. Uh, you know, in a not too long a video, the general sort of workflow that I went through to. Um, you know, to um, to create this landscape, point you in the right directions. But if you want me to do uh, more step-by-step -step videos, you know, uh, please don't hesitate to say it. it's um, you know it's really helpful for me to know. So as usual, please subscribe, um, go and check out my website, and I've uh, created a course. Um, so please also have a look at the shop. Uh, um, the store with the um, with the course all explained on there. Great, thanks for watching, and see you next time.